Welcome everybody. Today is another day to learn Python. Uh, so before we start today's lesson, let's recap what we have learned last week. As you can see, week one, and we have a couple of files. This file, if you remember, we just learned how to use the print built-in function. As you can see, it takes a parameter and you can just print that. And the parameter, as you can see, it could be a single quote or a double quote. And on this line, as you can see, the parameter or the argument actually it could be uh, as in the here one or a couple of them, but it should be separated by comma. Yeah, this is what we learned. So we did hello world, we print a cup, a different uh, text or number using the print uh, function. Great. And then we learned also different built-in function. Uh, before that, as you can see, we have also used a uh, comment, how to write comment. Uh, this is a single line comment and a multi-line comment. The purpose of comment is actually to leave some remark on your code and it's not going to be executed. Yeah, it is part of the code, but it will not run. Yeah, so, and then we saw different built-in function, print by now, you know, print very well and also lengths to know the lengths of a string or uh, a string or a list. And we learn also input round in addition, absolute value, int, string, sum, minimum, maximum, type, to check the type of the data type, Boolean. So to check what kind of Boolean, is it a true or a false? And range, range give us a range of integers, yeah? ID, it just generate a random ID, and dir to know about, uh, just to check the methods available for some object, Python object, yeah. List to create a list constructor. And I think we have seen this last week. You don't have to remember everything because we go through um, now and then, okay? Variables, we need variables to store data. For instance, this is a variable A, we store four at a memory location A, we store three at a memory location B. For instance, you sum this two up and then you store here, total, yep. And then make a difference and then you store here. That's a variable. Uh, so it's a memory location that allow us to store data when it comes to variables. Okay, what are legal or recommended variables? Actually, we call it snake case. If it's a compound word, you should write it like first name, underscore name, last name, age. Age is short, so you don't need a, a population. For instance, if you say pop population of a country, for instance, you may say whatsoever number, but you can also make it a country, something like the country population. Yeah, but it's so clear that if you say population, it indicates that the population of a certain country, so it's good enough to write population. And we learned that whenever we declare a variable, it should be mnemonic. A mnemonic means something that can be remembered so easily, right? Or that can be related to. Our first name, as you can see, yeah. So what do you expect if you see first name, someone's first name? And if you see last name, you just expect someone's last name, right? Yeah, nothing else. And then we learn different data types. As you can see, we have learned numbers. This is an int. And this is how to check a, a data type. And this should give us integer. And as you can see here, 9.81, it's a float. And this should give me a float. And this one is actually a complex number. If you check using type, it gives you also 
a complex number. And then we learned about strings. Strings are actually text data types, okay? Any text or anything inside double quote or single cut, we call it a string. So that's so easy. And then if you want to check the length of a string, you can use len. For instance, this should give us, uh, let me check, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, seven, it should give seven. List, list is a kind of uh, a collection of data, as you can see, list of numbers, list of some food stuff, and a list of countries, and a list of famous people. I'm in the list, guys. Anyway, okay, great. Uh, as you can see now, so list is so easy that it is something you use whenever you have a collection of items. It could be numbers, it could be strings or whatsoever. And now, as you can see here, we created a dictionary. This dictionary allow us to create a key value, key value, key value. We made actually a dictionary of uh, Finnish to English. Hey, Asana, a word, and talo, house, mies, and man. And you can, of course, can continue. Uh, why is that? Oh, I'm sure. So as you can see, what you should add, just a key value, key value, it increases. Okay, now just to check, yeah, I have modified it already, uh, but we can also store this as in actually, as in a variable, I can store it like this for instance, uh, dict or finish to English dictionary. Uh, finish to English, just I can, as you can see now, I can check the data type of, or I can print this and I can also check the data type of that dictionary. Yeah, great. But the thing is actually we have learned about this before we learn uh, data, uh, before we learn variables, but it's okay. So what are we going to cover today? Yeah, now let's move on to today's topic. Today, we will learn operators, okay? So let's have a note before we move on. Notes, I usually write notes. Uh, so you, uh, I use this M, it, so wait, it's just for me to take notes. So uh, we will learn uh, today operators, uh, but operators can be divided into our thematic operators. Do you remember already this? I hope so, right? Comparison operators, operators, logical operators. Of course, even there is assignment operator, assignment. Okay, by the way, the assignment operator, do you remember what's the assignment operator? Yeah, the equal sign is the assignment operator. And do you know the arithmetic operator? The plus, the minus, the multiplication, the division, maybe this the modulus and uh, the floor division, the exponentiation, all this could be in here. What are the comparison operators? The greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, what's the, uh, equal, that's equal, not equal. These are comparison operators. This the logical operator actually and or not negation. These are 
the operators, what we are going to learn today. What else are we going to learn today? I think it's also good to talk about strings today. And even if we have time, list, but let's put strings. String is quite light, and if, if, if we have time, we will talk about lists. This is good enough for today. Okay, now I will create uh, a folder. I call it week two. Yes. And now I may call this file or thematic operator. Just operators dot py. As you remember, dot py. Any Python file extension should be dot py, right? Yeah. Okay. Now we have learned this already, but just to again to help you remember everything related to automatic. Let's do it again. Let's just a could be four and b could be three so as i told you the automatic operators let's see our thematic operators are addition subtraction multiplication division floor division uh, modulus that's remainder exponentiation and what's left? I think this is all what we have. So let's do this. Then if we say print A plus B, and now we are doing addition, right? And let's see the result. We have lots of things. Let's close all this, it's too much. And then let's run again. Yeah, as you can see, it's seven, that's true. Uh, but it's good to write here, uh, the sum is, yeah, but the way I wrote it is not good. The sum is seven, great. And uh, instead of doing this, actually, we can first store the value. So we can say total or sum total is equal to A plus B. I, I, I could have said this sum instead of total, but the sum is actually a reserved word already. It's a built-in function, so I prefer to use total, yeah? So instead, I, I can call this total. And we can say here also, the total is, yeah, the total is seven. Now we can say difference, or the difference between A and B, that means A minus B, and the product, you can say A times B. As you can see, guys, when I'm writing the operators, the plus operator, there's some space. I can also write it without space, but it's not nice. Yeah, you can, it's, it's not easy to read. So remember, it's good to have space in between the operands and the operator. Yeah, great. Do the same for every operand and operator. So division, for instance, A divided by B, and if I want the floor division, floor division, I can say A floor division, actually this B. That means we don't care for the remainder. So four divided by three, what will be the floor division? It's going to be one, right? And let's go for remainder or modulus, remainder, remain. How do I write? Remainder. Am I right? Whatever. Uh, a divided by A modulus B. Yeah, this is how we do. And uh, what's, let's go for the exponential. And if we divide A, the power of B. Yeah, as you can see, A, the power of B. I think this is all what we need. So if you know how to do this, I think you know automatic operators. Now let's print them out. The difference is 
the difference use and then you just difference yep uh i can say print the division or the quotient is yeah div and uh, why do i need this because if you don't have this you don't know where this number is coming so it's it's for us it's a label a kind of a label so uh the floor division the floor division is and then i just give floor division and what else yeah the remainder print the remainder is remainder you can add if you want you can do this and something like that it's up to you guys something like this uh, okay let's see the result yep as you can see and let's keep doing this uh, now as you can see this is too big this very big number and then i will show you how to make this uh, somehow formatted to the way you want uh print the exponential of a to b whatever and then exponential and now i think we use three the power what is that for the power of three 64 great do you remember that this the round we learn round a built-in function round if you remember here a built-in function we learned round yeah so what's the round of 9.81 guys you tell me i think you answered already yes 10 yeah uh, but we can also use rounding off so now if i round this if you see if i round this it will be one so we lose lots of data but it's better if we just round it up to the first uh, significant digit or to the second maybe up to here let's try to round it in a more yeah so friendly way without losing much data round and then if i do this and i have to I thought I just used around what I'm touching. Where the floor division? The floor division is rounded, not the division. Oh, 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 sorry, thanks. Yeah, it should be from the floor division usually give us actually an integer. Uh, sorry. Round and floor uh no division actually what okay so yeah as you can see it's one but we don't want to be like that it's we are losing some data let's uh, to to uh make it to three significant digit as you can see now yeah it's much better if you want it to be just two significant uh digits and then you have something like this great you are done with automatic operators. Can we move or not? What do you think? If you don't, uh, then let's move on to the next part. I'm done with automatic operators. What you should remember as a recap, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, floor division. We don't care about the remainder. It's just take only the quotient, yeah? And this the floor division, and then the floor division, I mean, sorry, the uh, modulus, the modulus means actually, we just uh, want the remainder, yeah? Uh, for instance, if you go nine modulus five, what's the remainder for this, guys, you tell me. That's one the remainder for this is it one 
um, uh, now the remainder for this is not. Uh, if it is here, nine, if it here, yes, it is one here because nine can be divided for five one times and there will be a remainder of four. I can see the remainder here is four, right? Yeah, who agrees? Nine, div yeah, nine divided by five, the remainder is? It's four, right? If you agree, just type one for me, guys. And of course, I, yeah, I can show you. Print nine floor division by five. I'm expecting from here. Uh, no, no, I'm expecting from here one. Yeah. But if you say print nine modulus five, I'm expecting four. Yes, great. Yeah, if everybody is quiet, you know, I will be doubtful. So don't make me to, to, to be doubtful. And uh, because if the whole class is so silent, you know, I feel that I'm wrong. Yeah, thank you guys. So let's just close this lesson about arithmetic operators and we will continue to comparison operators. Yep.